and project funds were $800,976.93. Um, as everybody is aware, our fourth commitment um, member assessments were due on May 1st as of the end of April. 10 of 13 towns had made their payment and the um, remaining three um, are, were paid by the 7th of the month. Um, during the month, um, we see we continue to see a lot of activities in the um, student activity um, warrants, and uh, in that they have a lot of uh, field trips and um, activities, well, such as prom and whatnot, coming upon us. And so there's a lot of payment uh, funds um, for that. Um, our, our grants are continuing to come in. We've had um, $74,000 come in for grants. And um, you can notice that in the banking information at the, the below, um, the scholarship fund is starting to uh, replenish itself as we approach graduation. So um, that usually uh, gets up to be slightly over $100,000, and then we make awards at, at graduation, which brings it down significantly. Any questions? Seeing none. Make a motion to accept this presented. Second. Motion made. <coughs> Second. And second to accept the treasurer's report as presented. Questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. And the report is approved. And I just need to have a personal question. I do. I'm going to stay for the, the oh. couple of votes, and then I, I just going to ask to be excused. All right. Next item on the agenda. Fiscal year 2019 appointments. These are appointments for the district treasurer and reporting secretary. Their terms are July 1st to June 30th. Motions are in the Motions are in the pack. Someone want to make that motion? I move that we appoint Barbara Hozier as uh, treasurer for the committee for the year 2018 19. Second. Motion made and second to appoint Ms. Osier as district secretary for the fiscal year for the Treasure. district treasurer for fiscal year 19. <coughs> Ms. Osier, do you accept the appointment? Do you accept the next the nomination of that? <laughs> Questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Ms. Osier, you are here by appointment for the fiscal year. 19. Thank you. Thank you. That was worth standing for. <laughs> 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 Just never know if it's going to be a question. <laughs> Item 4.2, recording secretary. Mr. Chair. Thank you. I have a motion. 
Hi, Anthony. It's hereby move the appointment of Nicole Foreman as recording secretary of Black Sun Valley Regional Vocational Technical District. Second. Motion made and second to appoint Nicole Foreman as recording secretary. Nicole, would you accept such an appointment? Yes. Okay. Questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Nicole, thank you very much for continuing to the next passage. <coughs> next item on the agenda, Dr. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, it is with great delight and confidence that I welcome and invite uh, Anika Putin and Adam Kavanaugh uh, as Skills USA State Officers. It does look like your first name has to begin with A, but that's just a coincidence. Uh, but they are adorned in their, their standard red jacket, impressive, you know, right now. The American Revolution you know, is, uh, came in second for those outfits. Uh, anyway, we welcome, come forward. Any plans for your officership roles? So we'll be having our first meeting this Saturday, May 19th, and we'll be discussing the upcoming National Skills and Leadership Conference. And then during our summer leadership training, we'll be put into positions based on what the council decides is best for Skills USA and all of its members. Uh, it, it, would, it would take me a while to go through the accomplishments and achievements of these two individuals, but let me just summarize. Uh, Adam actually has, has served in probably every capacity that we know of in the district. He's an intern to senators, interns to reps, uh, and a variety of other roles. And among other things, in the shot kind, which Annika has been with us, she has actually earned perfect scores uh, in certain skills tests for the first time in the history of the skills assessments. So these are very distinguished individuals. We're glad they're part of us. Nice job. Keep us close. Thank Absolutely. you. Mr. Chair. Doc, what, just as a refresher, what, what are the responsibilities of the skills officers? Adam, you want to comment on the, the responsibilities of the skills officers, both in the state and the national? Yeah. Yes, so as a state officer, responsibilities include planning and facilitating all of the leadership conferences, starting with the fall leadership conference and then moving on to the leadership conference that's new this year just for seniors, and then the district and state conferences, and then also dealing with all the fund raising activities and goals for the entire year as well as any new motions that come to the floor regarding the Constitution. And then, at the national level, responsibilities are magnified immensely when you're representing 50 states and over 400,000 students. And then, in doing those roles, you become a champion at work, which is one of SkillsUSA's main purposes. Mm -hmm. And then, numerous other things that come along the way, including advocating for vocational education and career and technical education. Excellent. To strengthen their speaking and presentation skills, both individuals have competed in area extemporaneous and prepared speech competitions and distinguished themselves in that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, common student representatives. I see Colin over there. Yeah, I'm alone tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> so a couple weeks ago, uh, our uh, about 30 people from our council went to the CDMASC Spring Conference this year. Uh, it was held at North Brookfield High School, and we had one candidate run for regional president. It was Emily Donnelly. Unfortunately, she did not get on the board, uh, but she did get on our executive board for school this year. Last night, we had our annual e-board elections for the upcoming 2018-2019 season. Uh, our president is Olivia Mahoney. Vice President Logan Keith, Secretary Jess McKenzie, Communications Nolan Beckwith, Fundraising Samantha Houston, uh, Community Service Penny Hebert, NASC Excellence Chair Emily Donnelly, which is every year when we make our excellence book for the state, the NASC is nationally, so it's uh, between all 50 states and I believe Puerto Rico as well. And then our MASC, which is Statewide Excellence Chair, is Jacob Stevens. And then our advisor elects are Skylar Morrissey, Carly Brown, and Paige Marquez. Uh, last week, we did facilities appreciation. So each facility member got a personalized poster and a $5 Dunkin's gift card. Coming up, June 15th is our now annual handball tournament. This year, it will be in memory of Mr. Yancic. So all of the proceeds that we raise 
will go to the charity that he chose for his donations to go to um, in memory of him. So that we will be doing alumni teams, student teams, maybe teacher teams, uh, whoever really wants to play. We, we're really excited and all the HVAC students are involved now too and they're ready to go, we're ready to get started. Um, so that's pretty much it. This is my last meeting. It's been a pretty good two years. So I'd like to thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Comments or questions? I, Mr. Yantix designated his uh, fundraising effort is the scholarship. Okay, to, to the hometown bank where his wife is, in, uh, is employed. Yeah, so. But nice job. Uh, throughout you. your two years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Best of luck. <coughs> Thank you. Next item on the agenda Skills USA results. from this year so at first we had our fall leadership conference where we took um, 15 students and they all did very well everyone got a skills leadership award um, after that came districts which again we had yet another snow um, post two postponements because of the weather again this year but uh, at that conference we got a record 102 medals and with 14 sweeps and we took 215 students to districts this year. So it broke down to 35 gold, 34 silver, and 33 bronze. So the gold and silver and some of the bronze then went on to the state conference, which we just had. And we earned 51 medals, so we broke last year's record again with 22 gold, 15 silver, and 14 bronze. And we will be going um, hopefully June 25th to the 30th to the National Conference. So 21 of the 22 um, medalists will go and we have our two elect officers going as well and we have three national voting delegates. Uh, something else that um, Adam and I touched upon this year, they started the SAIL conference and that is Senior Adventures in Leadership. So it's just for seniors, and we were able to take eight senior students to that. It was a day-long um, conference that they went to, and they're going to be doing it again next year. Uh, community service won silver this year, and they did the Game Change Program, which we're implementing within the school. It's a uh, Robert Kraft partnered with um, Maura Healy, and they developed this um, program called Game Change. So it's uh, about anti-violence, and it's educating students in healthy relationships. Um, so we're implementing that. And then this year we have uh, 67 graduating seniors that are going to receive the cord at graduation, which means they earned a medal during their four years at Rockstone Valley Tech. Um, so, oh, you want to talk about that? Um, so the next page, if you flip over, um, two. Oh, two. Actually, it's states. And then if you flip to the specifics of the district conference. Um, do you want to talk about that? Sure. So at the district conference, um, they started to talk about, after all the awards, they were letting us know all of the um, competitors that earned a perfect score, whether it was in OSHA, um, employability, or within their trade. So on that page, everyone that has a star, an asterisk, um, and it's highlighted, they all earned the perfect score, uh, perfect score in one of those, and it does continue down to the next page where um, there's a list below that they, students actually didn't even receive a medal, but they got perfect scores in something. Yeah. So our, our school had the most perfect scores. <laughs> we did. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so our fundraising this year, we definitely um, tried to up it. Um, one of the clubs that, no, that we no longer have here, it, um, the Friends of Rachel, they used to do a monthly fundraising dinner here in the restaurant. 
So when they um, didn't want to do that anymore, we said, yes, please. <laughs> and it's uh, once a month in here, and it's a themed dinner. And it was, we took over in January, and it's been very successful and helpful to our, um, our club to raise to raise the money that we need. And with that, we have donated um, more money to Doug Flutie and Be Like Brit. And we've also purchased um, 25 new Skills USA um, Carhartt jackets, which is part of the Skills attire that the students need. And this year, we, the 25 was for all the delegates that um, got Hanukkah and Adam elected at the state conference. So they are you know, expensive and we're hoping that we, the dinners in the next year will uh, help get us some more. <laughs> um, and the fundraising report is on the back, the last page. Um, so the total was $13,296 as of that, that time. Um, we still have expenses to come out of this and of course more, more, more purchases. <laughs> Questions, comments? Uh, first of all, remarkable. Uh, you know, really impressive. Uh, great to see the continued growth. And also to watch uh, what we see. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fiore, Mr. Rivera, and so many others uh, spending additional time with the students as they hone their skills and bring the, the results. And certainly not limited to the manufacturing wealth component, but just a, it's a great example of the extra. Uh, is there anything else we can do to help in the awareness of the public of the dinners? Um, are, we, are we getting coverage to the extent that it's useful on the website? Yep, on the website. It was, it was um, I know, through different social media platforms that was put out. Um, I think this year coming up, because we're going to start it from fresh, that I think that it will be helpful that we're going to, you know, get a, you know, better understanding of who we're reaching out to and, and try to, you know, broadcast more out but and one other thing that we actually did was um, the uh, chapter excellence program um, in skills USA we there's um, three levels and we applied for our first level and we got it so we're a chapter of distinction and then next year we'll be working with our chapter members to go to the level two um, and hopefully get the gold standard which is the highest so. we would be glad to uh, provide the cable TV networks with uh, upcoming calendars, uh, other kinds of things if you, if you want to springboard that. So, Excellent, yes, yeah. that would be great. And mm -hmm. Mr. Finn had a question. He wanted to know, uh, how did the, statistically, you were, you were quite precise as far as the districts last year versus the dis new high water mark, the districts this year. Up in the state, what was last year's state tally? I think we this? had four total medals. Yeah. I believe it was like 44. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And not as many officerships or recognitions as well. No, we don't. Right? Well, no we, one near that. We we only had one off. Like, well, we had we Adam um, was our only officer candidate. Versus last the year. seven recognitions of this cycle. Okay. What what do you mean by seven? Well, we, we have special recognitions. Okay. Are those, oh, you mean the perfect scores? Oh, those. That's okay. That's that's, that's just, just, That was that definition was just, of that is only the perfect scores. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How did we do last time versus perfect scores versus this side? Um, you know last that? year was the first time they recognized it, and it was only our students. We had um, two students in the painting and design yeah. that got it. That's okay. Yeah. That's Thank you. People are just watching the yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Mr. Rivera speaks with it. With it, with it <laughs> well, this is my first year, so I'm kind of learning. I'm, I'm rolling with this, and uh, I will add, like at the district level, it was, it's interesting because uh, it's, it's it's a district competition, and there's many schools there, about six six different schools there, and uh, but it felt like a BBT award night. <laughs> there's um, 14 sweeps in 14 different categories, and first, second, third went to our school. It was pretty amazing, and. Uh, I just couldn't believe it every time, you know. And third place, BBT, second place, BBT, and first place. That's all you kept hearing all night long. So uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. And then when we went to the states, uh, obviously we did excellent again. And it's so much fun to be a part of this. I, I've been uh, an instructor here ten years. Um, I've always been involved with skills, like when it was called Vika back in the day. I competed myself in welding. I think in New York State, I was a junior in high school. I won the silver medal. I started out in Lemister freshman year, moved to New York. 
and then I competed in New York my junior year and won the silver medal, moved back to Massachusetts the last eight months of senior year and just made the deadline to join um, Vika at the time and um, won the bronze medal in the welding and my best friend won the gold and he went on to nationals winning a, a silver medal in the nation and um, at that time they took the top three competitors and they wanted to figure out who's going to represent the United States at the world's competition and my friend won the rights to to win that so it was pretty cool so my welding strike at the time was the first welding strike ever in Massachusetts to have that the bragging rights and um, many years later I became an instructor and I too was able to train a young man from, from this program here and um, he went to the world stage so it's kind of cool it's a pretty neat story come full circle so I was behind the scenes doing it and now I'm, I'm here with these, with these ladies and, uh, part of the team it's, it's pretty interesting so thank you Thank you very much for the commitment you've shown for the, for the kids. Yeah. Wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks for Thank supporting you. us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. The next item on the agenda, facilities. Mr. Levin. Yes. Um, I see some brickwork going on out there. Yeah. Well, first of all, we had a meeting on Tuesday night, but we didn't have a meeting because we couldn't have a forum. So the people didn't quite didn't make it. We didn't know that at the last minute. so. I just basically got an update from Jim on what's going on. You can see the uh, sign, the football field, everything's done, the scoreboard looks really good. You know, they did a good job. And now you can see the brickwork is done. Thanks to Paul. It's done. Not quite, not quite. Well, it's done, done to the aspect that's there and it's grown, you know. So compared to sitting in the backyard and the yeah, so it's closer. Yeah, so it's getting closer. I don't know, Jim, if you want to say a few words on it. No, I mean, right, right, right now the brickwork's going up. I'm still working with uh, Tim Snow, uh, a senior uh, in drafting, to fabricate the aluminum structure that's going to go on top of the brickwork, because now that we have the actual dimensions, um, you know, he's fabricating the design that we're going to send out to have uh, fabricated from sign companies. So, uh, and he's he even told me that he's willing to come back after graduation in June to help out with that. You know, to finish that application, so it's great to see that partnership. Mm -hmm. Any questions or oh, anything? I mean, I don't it's bricks. Hi, yeah. <laughs> right, just a couple of developments. I mean, uh, parallel to the uh, facilities activities, uh, I was hoping actually to bring the check of the sale of the formerly gifted land mm -hmm. on, on Chestnut Street uh, tonight, but but. Um, the attorney for, uh, for the other side uh, wasn't able to finalize a couple documents, so we expected we could have it as soon as tomorrow, right? Um, and so that that's proceeding, um, and uh, without, without a hitch, okay, uh, so, uh, but I don't have to check the attorney tonight. I'm mm -hmm. it, but so uh, we have that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the for the yeah. Wait till there's another yeah. 30 days, just yeah. to be fair. <laughs> not, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but it's it, one plan for an anticipated recommendation would be that uh, such funds, when received, uh, that would have to be um, visited or examined by the Department of Revenue. Okay, you know, kind of cleanse through that process. Uh, and then it uh, is certified in our excess and deficiency, and more than likely, again, we, we should anticipate we probably will ask for support to use that for the last section of the loop, uh, and once again, avoid any need to borrow, uh, hopefully, and or ask our citizens to pony up additional funds. And then, uh, it, assuming that the Mass School Building Authority supports that as it supports our other efforts of this nature, uh, and, and they've also complimented us for the way in which we've done these things without impacting the tax dollar, uh, then we would be eligible for a little bit better than 53% reimbursement so we back, and then, you know, you, you can look at that when that happens, okay? Um, so, um, not to spend it before we get it, but, but we have it, once again, kind of set up for recycling tax activity to, to address a priority. Uh, in some ways, there's no real blitz in fixing a roof, but it's still in your best interest to do that. And that's that's the last yeah. of, that would be the last, last of our upgrade that we're aware of unless you run into something mm -hmm. unexpected. Uh, there is that. Also, we're in the finalization of the uh, lease agreement for the Maplewood Cemetery uh, 
trustees uh, to hope that we can come to terms uh, on that, okay? Uh, and so just to keep you posted on that. Um, so we were working, again, outside players um, in the Maplewood Cemetery Group to uh, come to a lease agreement that is in, we think is in the best interest of the district and seems palatable and acceptable to the Cemetery Commission. Uh, we do not have a contract yet, right. I mean, but we're, we're closer than we were, kind of like the sign out front, we're closer than we were, and we're making steady progress on those two things. Uh, and I would imagine next month, Jim will probably make a presentation on summer improvements. Yeah. We have a brief summer, but we try to maximize it. And uh, it will be fine. Yeah, gave us a little bit of an update on that. Yeah. Yeah, so we should have to that yet. Yeah. Anything else for facilities? Seeing none, hearing none, we're going to move on. Mr. Johnson. Right on schedule. For now. <laughs> so, guys, I apologize for this. I just caught one of my line items is not correct, so I'll have to just give you the title of it. Chris, is this one? Yeah, you've got the same one. Um, it's one of the transfers that I'm making. I, I was kind of in a rush, and but oh, we'll get that corrected in the motion. Um, so uh, tonight before you, you've got uh, line item transfers that are going into two accounts and I'll direct your attention to the bottom of the transfer list. There are two accounts there. The first one should actually read health insurance. I uh, pulled down another motion and I that's the one that I, I failed to change uh, um, on this one. So that should read our active employee health insurance line for $150,000. Um, so that's the first one we'll address. Uh, we did some research, and you know, obviously, when we're building uh, any of these budgets, it's six months prior to it going into effect. And uh, when we get into a new year, you've got new hires. Sometimes um, you can't plan on who took advantage of health insurance in a prior period, or if anybody's going to be coming on to the health insurance product, or moving from a single or two person to a family, or even migrating to another plan such as the HSA. In this case, we had nine employees who dropped onto our health insurance, um, and there's other movement, people coming in and going off, that's equating to uh, 149,000 and change uh, deficit. Uh, the second one, and then we'll have a discussion if you need to, is the Skills USA for the national competition. Uh, this estimate was provided by Becky Corda, and uh, we using the money that we currently have in our operating funds plus another $38,000 to get us to just under $45,000 is what's going to be needed uh, from an estimate standpoint to cover the competition for the, for the nationals. Um, so with that, I then identified line items that we could transfer money from, and I'll direct your attention to the top of the form. The first is uh, Barbara's Rand interest expense, which we always budget for, we haven't need to use. So that's in the amount of $5,000. The school choice assessments, those were also, when we budgeted, we used prior year actuals, and we had a student drop off. There was also some SPED uh, costs associated with that student and the transfer in of a new one that had a, a delta of $8,843. And then there are three items that are asterisks for the teacher salary. Those are very special circumstances in terms of the science, business tech, and HVAC. Um, with the passing of one of our instructors, obviously that was budgeted for his salary. We had another one that was also someone who was budgeted and ultimately passed away. And um, all that was available in those line items. We had to provide other coverage uh, throughout the year in different forms, uh, using longer term subs. Uh, which could also be a reason why you're seeing an increase in your health insurance um, for somebody who now qualifies for more than 30 hours a week on a regular schedule. Um, and then for the remaining ones, for tech department, SPED, and electronics, those are just a variable that comes in in terms of what was budgeted and when someone might be entering the system or if it was budgeted at a higher rate and they were hired at a lower rate. Um, or if we budgeted for them to have additional credentialing and that didn't materialize, this is just something that becomes available as excess in that fund uh, in the form of savings. 
All total is $188,000 worth of transfers to fund those two line items. I will tell you, uh, from my perspective, this is concerning to me when we step into next year, because if we, um, uh, a lot of this I think happened too when we hit the April 1 um, uh, renewal, you know, we saw some additional movement there. So um, I'm concerned about this moving forward, uh, and we need to monitor this more closely at this point, given the six month time period before the fiscal year even starts, to get a better, a better handle on it as we move through the year. Um, we also have some costs in this health insurance line that's ultimately transferred over to grants, and I've, I've removed the effect of that. If you look in your uh, budget report that was given, um, that is included in that deficit right now, but ultimately it will be moved over as those costs are charged. So with that, um, if you've got any specific questions, otherwise they're pretty basic transfers, uh, having identified the sources and uses of okay. funds. I'd like to make a motion as presented. Second. Motion made and second to approve the motion as presented. Questions, comments, discussion? Doc. Uh, Chris, thank you for the background explanation uh, and also the, the manner in which you've identified the possibility of making transfers that don't disrupt the education quality of what we do. Uh, clearly, health insurance uh, is um, is a growing issue. Uh, as, as we certainly heard that on the, the budget presentation path and elsewhere. Um, the, the, um, <clears throat> I know the association just elected new officers uh, and the insurance committee has been meeting periodically, uh, but uh, and, and we're not in the cycle of negotiations, collective bargaining. Uh, but th this is another example of the need uh, and the commitment that, that we we need to examine uh, our uh, offering our coverage and, and explore new areas of belief, or you know, I don't know about impact bargain, but but uh, you know, we're gonna have to ramp up our conversations. Uh, with the players, uh, I think, to maintain the professional relationships we have uh, and maybe even have the insurance advisor come meet more often to, and, and really delve into this. Roll up the shirt sleeves and, and get into this. Uh, the, um, I don't think we've been casual about this, uh, but I think we need to be more aggressive uh, with this. So, um, on, on that, um, I've reached out to Mike and uh, President, so sure. correct, and ask him to make comments on the document that we sent out that was a recap of our um, meeting and some potential action items to get input. Uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick, you asked me to follow up on the concept of self-insurance. That was done two weeks ago with Deb Young, and they're going to be doing a presentation for us in terms of, you know, the difference between a small and a larger employer undertaking that task and what uh, steps we need to move through. Obviously, when you do that, you've got premiums that would be coming in to start uh, paying out those expenses, but over time, those uh, kind of get tied to actuarial valuations based on experience, and you have to pony up that just like you would, uh, it's almost like uh, your OPEB. They project what it's going to be based on your uh, actual experience. So they can use what we've got today and give us an idea of whether that's a viable pathway for us um, and then we're looking at other ideas just internally. Do we need to start um, moving dates of um, uh, when you, uh, for the HSA? Uh, because our FSA doesn't align with that. It confuses people uh, that they can't take advantage of an HSA from a contribution standpoint until the FSA plan year ends. So if we back that up, that might be more of an incentive for them to see that they're not losing anything, which they wouldn't be anyway. We just have to tell them you can't make a contribution until such time as that plan year ends. But people, just, there's a lack of trust there. They, they just physically don't see it. And, and so we got to work through some of the education piece of that. Yep. Um, for the benefit of those Curtis references, um, in our pursuit of alternatives, I, I, I periodically ask them to research different things, including whether or not we should consider a plan uh, and, and a bit ambitious to be self-insured, uh, whether or not we bond enough money to do that and look at the actuarials and things like that. So we're looking at very different uh, avenues and alternatives, so we're in a better position to propose to, to the full school committee and maybe the collective bargaining environment uh, alternatives that are fair and reasonable uh, and cost-effective. So, so, thank you. Uh, yeah, just one more question. Um, 
we had uh, had some uh, a meeting on the uh, insurance advisory. Uh, we had some notes that came back from that. From those <coughs> notes, uh, they were dispersed out to people with some uh, hopeful action items and follow up on that. Have you uh, got any of those uh, recommended remedies from uh, either side of the table as to what could come in? That's where I started. I reached out to him and said, you really need to look at that document. I think Mike initially said, did I get something? And I said, yes. Um, and if you just kind of scroll by it, go back and take a look at it, you need me to resend it, I will. And I said, but we need you to respond. Uh, I think his initial comment was, we do have an HSA. And I said, yes, we do, but there's not a healthy participation. I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, there's like six or seven on the association side, and because they are the bulk of the, what well, they are what drives our health insurance decisions. I uh, said so it's it's really about what are we going to do from an education standpoint? Can we look at some grandfathering provisions? Would the union approve such a change? We've got some legal opinions that tell us the district couldn't drive that kind of a change, which, um, all right, so if legal said that, I'll take their word for it. But there's nothing that says the union can't vote that for themselves and go contrary because they're the voting body. Um, I think we'd have to consider what happens to the non-union employees in that circumstance. Would we automatically migrate to the HSA, pl HSA plan? Um, I think we'd have to consider some of the impact there. Uh, that, would, that be, would that be legal? Um, I mean, I can understand the union taking a position on it because they're the governing body of that, but the folks who want uh, under the union contract that traditionally get the benefit of the union negotiated right. contract, um, what is the legal ramifications for that if they were to go to HSA? Do we know that? Um, I, I don't believe we would have to make a choice one way or the other. We couldn't treat those employees and segregate them off and say, you can be grandfathered, any new people coming in uh, can only get this plan union activity could do that. That's why I say I think we'd have to consider what would the district have to do? Go ahead and push people right to the HSA plan? Um, or would we keep them on the old plan until we got movement with the union at some point and then migrate them over? But I think you have to have significant participation for us to realize the impact of that HSA plan. Um, and one thing I did note uh, was we had some migration from Fallon to the HSA plan and unfortunately in that case while the HSA is a great product and it will serve its purpose over time for the small population that is there if you add the amount that we contribute which is 750 for an individual 1500 for the two person and family it actually costs the district a little bit more money because the Fallon premiums are lower to the point that that it makes the premium higher when we add our contribution to that we're okay on the uh, Harvard Pilgrim, which is where a majority of our population stands. Okay, well, all, all I want to say is I'm, um, I'm not pleased with the progress on this. I, I happen to echo the same sentiments as Doc. Um, we, we, I think, had a very productive meeting in the first meeting, um, and it, it seemed to have fizzled. Uh, I'm not sure who the fizzler is, um, but I think there's probably enough fizzle on both sides to get this thing started again. Yes. Uh, this was a major issue uh, in, in my town and talking to people. Um, they uh, continue to ask, why aren't you on the GIC, which as you uh, know only went up about, I think 80% of it had no increase and 20% of it only had 2 yeah. or 3% increase. Yeah. And I'm coming in with a heavily, heavily negotiated 9.9% 9 .9 increase. And they just said, well, why don't you just go to GIC? So. I think uh, you know this needs to be developed, and I couldn't agree with Doc Moore. This is going to be a major issue going forward, and it's just going to be a big expense for all of us. And I'm not particularly sure that, that, that the GIC isn't the right way to go if they continue to, to do what they've been able to do, which is 430,000 members keeping the cost down. I don't know; it's just my opinion, but I think we got to have some we got to have some answers on my questions. Well, we just oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I like the sign out front. Uh, since we uh, followed through with the di distribution of the work of the Insurance Advisory Committee, uh, the uh, association just create, uh, elected the new officers, so it's okay, there's your, your timetable. Now we know just who we're speaking with okay, on that side of the fence. But they uh, were new at the meeting we had. Uh, they were the new members who were at the meeting that we had, correct? Oh, they just, just had their elections. Uh, last, 
Mr. Meeson. But is it the same gentleman who's in charge as it was? Uh, he, uh, yes, the president. Mike, right? Yeah, the president. He was there at the previous yes, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And he was there yeah. at this meeting. He just got baptized a little different. Okay. Right. Well, he got reelected. <laughs> but, 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 but no, I say so. With that new election, uh, re election, he comes to uh, the responsibility to come with it. Okay. Oh, the other thing, Curtis had a conversation, and I know Anthony had a conversation. Okay, so that we, we're pushing him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that, no, that, I, I, that we, I know we are. Not, we're not where we want to be, uh, but we we haven't uh, let this slide by. Uh, and um, we, we, we've we reminded people of the need to do this as a higher priority than they seem to or have in the past. Right. So just a little bit of progress, okay, in the sense of setting the table. Uh, and hopefully we, we can take this another step. It, it, it just appears to me every time that we talk in the health insurance part of it, the, they come in that you know 15, 17 percent increase, and then we have to go arm wrestle with them. Next thing you know, it's down to like Doc's help your help. Last time we got it, cut almost like half. Yeah. Um, it just is weird <coughs> to me that we just kind of, maybe we need to shake them up a little bit and just see what the GIC can offer. Because if it's a lot less, maybe that's the way you ought to go. Uh, it's, it's excuse me, I'm not trying to. Uh, it is clear to to me, and I'm sure others, that uh, chipping away. Uh, as we may have been inclined to do and be successful in getting out of the table, uh, won't, won't do it, okay? So, you know, just, just the, the 0 0.5, the 75, the 74, 73, uh, the changing the contributory rates from only one part of the cost right. uh, by, by uh, so small fragments uh, it is insufficient uh, in, in the, given the cost of uh, impact that we're witnessing. Yep. And so it was a reasonable strategy for a while. Uh, it was achieved. Uh, what, well, it what, had to be when we were 90 10. You didn't have anywhere else to go. Well, we started at 90 10. You know, we, we had a, we had a mile uh, and, and we've enjoyed particularly attractive rates for many years, not so much in this last cycle. And we need a, a new developer calls, a new problem calls for new solutions. Yep, so couldn't agree more. So, but just one final comment. We have approached Deb about looking into um, the GIC light, and I had a conversation with Mike about that as well. And I said, our towns are really pressing us to, to you know, really look into this issue of health insurance and, and what's driving the rates up. And, and when you've got several of our towns that do participate, they would like to see um, us do the same thing in order to realize the savings. Um, and I said there is a provision in the law that allows um, your governing bodies to actually trigger that and bypass. And I said that's not what anybody's trying to do here. But that is what some have been forced to do. I think it's fair to say we, it's never desirable to take that out of our bargaining hands and putting it at the state because they can make any change they want to that and it just impacts. Have they negotiated changes? Not with us, no. They make the change. If, it's, if you're joining the GIC, it's whatever they do. That's why they can control. So they, they can indeed Correct. go ahead and put that change in without having to go through a negotiation with, say, the Teachers Association here at Blackstone. They, they could, but you have to accept whatever it is they're doing. Oh, and I don't disagree. No, you, right. So good, bad, or different. You've got to accept it. So if we did a GIC light plan, you know, you don't have to necessarily join it, but you could do the same benefit structure, and that would still leave some of that within your control for future negotiations. But that would be a good starting point. So they're going to be looking at that as well. Okay. I think the point was made. Okay. We got to keep moving this thing because this this is not getting better. It's getting worse. Okay. Um, did y'all make that actual no, vote? Motion is on the table. The motion is on the table. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving item 9.1, the balance transfer, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. The transfers are approved. Okay, uh, and before you've got two um, uh, donations, one from Mass Bay Community College, item 9.2A is a 2012 Chevrolet um, Camaro. And I believe these are through the Ford Asset Program. We used to belong to it. I think Mass Bay um, still does. We can't get anything through them direct anymore because there's a large fee associated with that. And from what I understand, Massachusetts seems to be the only state that has the fee. Um, so we got it indirect through Mass Bay. And uh, we're looking for your uh, vote to approve uh, or to, to accept the donation. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion made. <coughs> And second to accept the, the 2012 Chevy Camaro. Questions, comments, discussion? Curtis, given the specificity of the uh, tax exempt dollars, 19000 on the first yes. 
Uh, what, how, how is the value of a vehicle that can't be used or is used only as a stationary uh, problem solving tool? How, 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 is there any well adjustment of value when, when it, it doesn't have a standard use, it has its has a instructional use? I haven't necessarily been told that these aren't usable. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But there is a value associated with that, and that is through the Auto Tech instructors. They determine from Blue Book, yeah. and it's got to be running for them to give anything, on, uh, I would say, on that Blue Book value. It has to be. It, yeah, no. Like, so, is, is when something's going to be uh, put into, I'm not salvage here, but, but yep. it, it no longer is being used in the manner of a car tradition. Oh, correct. Used. It's not hitting the roadway. You can't cannibalize it. Okay. And it's still pretty valuable. I, I understand the value. It's a teaching tool. Yep. I just want to know whether or not it, it, a blue book is pretty much designed for something that you're going to use <laughs> on the roadway. Well, you know. no, it, it is. And so the, the donor has a choice. You can either sell it and get the money, or you can take it as a tax write-off. It, it, you know, it's just how it impacts your taxes. In this case, Mass Bay is not going to be filing taxes, but we still, for their for their purposes, we just assign the value. Again, this comes from our experts in auto tech, and that then goes down to a taxpayer or a community or an entity. Yeah, I love that. I just I want to point out if there's any kind of adjustment for the value when, when it has. No, because I think it's at the date that it's given, it's, is it usable as a vehicle, regardless of what we're going to do with it, okay. it is the bottom line. If that's the answer, that's the answer. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, discussion on the Camaro? Seeing none here, none. All those in favor of accepting that donation, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item 9.2B is from one of our uh, employees, Kim Elder. She is donating a 2000 Honda Acura, uh, and it's valued at $2,354. I'll make the motion. Motion, the motion made and second to accept the 2000 Honda Acura. Questions, comments, discussion? It's going to be the same thing as a work on vehicle? Yes. Anything else? Yes. Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor of accepting this donation say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Donation is accepted. give her a new parking sticker for the new car. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be no charge. <laughs> no charge. Oh, darn. <laughs> okay, um, the next orange document you have, and it is followed by a blue vote sheet, item 9.3. There's a whole lot of information on there that we're required to present, and uh, in the end, we just have to run through a calculation, look at the, in the end, it's the price of a free lunch, and then we pull off the value of the federal reimbursement for full pay students and come up with a value. In this case, it's $2.92. At this point, we are at $2.90. So given the fact that we're just below that, we have to run it through the inflationary factor. When we do, we get a 12 cent add to that, which requires us to raise the price of lunch. At this point, it would only be a dime. We don't go to the two pennies. So we're going from $2.90 to $3.00. Um, just to give you an idea, Minden Upton and Northbridge are at $2.85. That's for this year. I'd be very, very surprised if they're not required to raise their lunch. There are ways that you can do that by supplementing with other funds, such as the general fund. Um, but we are actually pretty much in line with our other schools when I go down the list. We're at $2.90 and uh, Grafton $2.95. And uh, let's see, Bellingham, Blackstone, Millville, Douglas, Milford Public, and Millbury, and Sutton are all at $3. And Hopedale and Uxbridge are at $3.25. So as we're moving into 2019, we will be um, certainly at a majority of our schools of where they sit now. Um, motion made on second to increase the lunch to $3. Questions, comments, discussion? Stop. Curtis, there's been considerable debate at the State House over the past 10 days over uh, the school systems that have punished the kids uh, who. Uh, Lunch shame. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right, that's the term. But uh, the, uh, in any case, it's a situation where uh, a student may or may not be eligible for free and reduced lunch, but they, they didn't sign up for it, uh, and they've been, uh, they've been given like a backroom sandwich or. or them like deadbeats. 
uh, is, do the school committee feel comfortable that Valley Tech has processes in, in place that that does not happen here? Uh, absolutely, and we go this, through this with the student uh, parent orientation day, and what we do is we tell them that the system, we encourage everybody to sign up online and get notifications when their balance is starting to get low, so we start notifying somewhere around $6 and let them know you're starting to get low. When they hit the zero, we tell the parents we'll let them charge three times. At, on that fourth charge, we give them an alternative lunch, which fully qualifies. It's just not the full main meal. Um, and if they uh, have any sensitivities to that meal, we will arrange for them to have another one. And we start reaching out at that point either to guidance counselors um, or to parents to just ask them, uh, were you aware the balance is low? We need you to get that in here. If they've already picked up a lunch, They'll usually let them go ahead and take it. They'll just, you know, kind of pull them off to the side eventually and let them know, hey, just make sure you're checking with your parents to make sure you get lunch on the account or lunch money on the account. Um, we don't treat them any differently, especially when they're going through the line because all of this is um, cashless. Uh, nobody knows who's free. Nobody knows who's reduced. The only thing they say is just you're okay to go, you're okay to go. And then if there's any uh, issues as they're getting lower and lower, um, you know, they start telling them if they see it's persistent, then it really is a hard line to the guidance counselors for them to reach out and find out if something's going on with the parent. We'll even do that in our office uh, to see if we need to get them a free and reduced lunch application. So we uh, undertake all efforts to make sure that they're getting what they need. And we usually find out that a parent didn't know or maybe the kid's not spending their lunch money on lunch. They're using it for something else. Uh, but we, we do offer assistance in any way we can. Any other questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor of increasing the cost of lunch, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And, and the final one is uh, the, uh, we would like the school com committee to consider accepting um, the Dupree Tool Scholarship. And Fran Dupree was a graduate in 1975. And um, they would like to start giving two $500 scholarships every year to purchase tools for up to $500. Currently, the way it's established, because they're looking at matching funds from several different organizations, that it needs to pass through a 501c3. We are a 170c1. Although we're tax exempt, they really prefer that to go through that organization, so we're going to use the Valley Tech Ed Foundation. Um, and then they're going to pass the money once they accept the check to us, and we'll maintain the scholarship here. But at least it's met their requirements to pass through a 501c3. Um, it will then follow the same scholarship procedures we always have in place here. I'll entertain a motion. Motion. I'll make the motion. Motion made and second to approve the death scholarship. Questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. Oh, ah. uh, the, the reference uh, of 1975 graduate uh, is a perfect segue for me to ask the committee also to enter a moment of silence for the loss of former long term principal, uh, Valley Tech employee John LeBrun. Next on the agenda, policy subcommittee. Mr. Van Ray. Uh, Dave, Paul, and I met for almost three hours the other day going over all of these policies. Um, most of it's just single word changes and some phrase changes, but it's basically the same. A lot of it's from the NASC language that require changes. And some of it's going to be, let me go over this quickly. Fix one is a non discrimination. Act for all the things, and it deals with changing a lot of the words. The other thing that was dealing with pregnancy discrimination and that type of thing. So, the first one is the meal changes. Uh, you all received the policy, and it's marked and read the changes, and it's mostly just plain old terminology changes. Well, like house people. Pardon me? I'm working word house people. Uh, most of it. Kind of the same. I'll make the motion. <clears throat> For the new policy, the, the new meal charge policy. Motion made and second. Motion made and second. 
Questions, comments, discussion? All those in favor of approving the new policy for meal charge EFD, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. The right to unite policies, the biggest one, as I said, is uh, the non discrimination policy, and that re theme, theme goes through all of the other policies further down in the handbooks and everything else where it addresses them. Um, as you'll see in the, pet, in the one provided view, most of it has changed. A lot of it's crossed out from our terminology to MASC terminology. The next one is the um, bias disability, also that's from MASC. Tobacco changes are, are fairly small, and that is also the majority of the changes for MASC addressing um, electronic cigarettes, I guess it's called, and that type of stuff. And the alcohol and tobacco drug prohibited is the same. Any questions? Okay. Nobody has any objection. I entertain a single motion to approve all the revised policies that we have in front of us. I'll make a motion to approve it as presented. <clears throat> motion made and second. Motion made and second to accept the revisions to <clears throat> policies AC. ACE, ADC, and JICH. For all those that are looking for acronyms. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, any comments, questions, comments, discussion? Mm -hmm. you have something to add to that? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor of approving those revisions, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Those four policies are now revived. Okay, I appreciate if we do the same with these here policies, we'll do them all at once. Nobody has any objection. Because the, these are now handbook approval. Oh, handbook. Different sections. Um, the Here is a synopsis of all the changes. It's three pages. And it breaks down all of the changes in the handbook right here. And, and this book is basically three paint changes. It gives you the terminology, why they were changed, and the reason that they had to be changed. Motion to accept. Second. Motion made and second to accept in bulk these five handbooks. Uh, if, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I, I did have a note here that I, I wanted yep. to check with. Um, this is on uh, this handbook approval. Yeah. Uh, number eight. Uh, I didn't, and questioning the reading of it says clarif clarified that students may be consequence for incidents. I, 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 I had just sort of it. Um, it may not read correctly, so I wanted to bring it to your attention. Anthony, can you address that one? Yeah. Oh, see anything? Yeah. It's number eight, first yeah. sentence. It might just be the way the note's written. That's why I think we want the clarification to make sure the handbook. So yeah, yeah this, this isn't the actual wording in the handbook. Right. This was a summary, and it looks like there's a typo in the summary. Yeah. Okay. I, Does okay. that address no. your concern? Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure that, um, yeah. I think I understood what it meant. <clears throat> yeah. And I just wanted to make sure that that obviously was clarified before it gets in. That's all. I just happened to catch it when I was reading yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. But you know I do read this. I it was one of the long ones. the first page. Yeah, yeah I know. At least the cover page. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments, discussion? All right. This was a single motion to approve all five handbooks, so the motion before us is. So all those in favor of approving the student handbook, the athletic student handbook, the practical nursing student handbook, practical nursing student, practical nursing tuition and fees, practical nursing faculty handbook. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. The handbooks are now approved. Next up, Mr. Steele. Thank you very much for having me. Mr. Brochure told me I have until 7.05. It gives me at least 10 minutes. Chet, <laughs> Chet almost cut us up. Almost. <laughs> so let me see what I can do. Uh, actually, I, the screen is down, Anthony, they can't see the clock. I have, I have nothing but good news to report to you. Well, Go you see nice. uh, I make a motion to accept it. 11.1 uh, MCAS trial exams. I alerted you earlier in the year that we were embarking on this. There was some concern, or you know, our students uh, being used as uh, guinea pigs and that type of thing. Uh, we, we always protect against that, as I assured you. 
And I thought, um, since we discussed it coming into it, you should get a follow-up. Um, surprising results. Uh, so we did the same as actually I think all schools, all high schools in, in Massachusetts participated. Uh, about a third, roughly a third, 75 uh, students or so participated, sophomores. They did so right on the heels of one of their other MCAS exams, but they did it enthusiastically as we uh, expected they would. Uh, but this was a new type of MCAS uh, that's, that's coming out. Uh, this, the major difference is it's all electronic, uh, whereas right now we, we test in paper and pencil. Um, so this was a computer-based exam. And uh, the adults, I think, are pretty uneasy about it. You know, it's a whole new way of doing business. There's a number of things that can go wrong. You know, uh, networks could go down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the, apparently the, the uh, students love it. They, they thought it was far superior uh, to the paper version. Uh, they, in this case, it was an English uh, exam that they were uh, doing a trial on. They were able to, you know, blow up their passage that they're reading on one half of their screen, type in the other half. The fact that they can type and not have to write, uh, you know, their, their drafts and things in pencil was very favorable to them. Um, and I guess as you could like, logically expect of digital natives, they thought it was a great improvement and, and quite an upgrade. Uh, so uh, we did our part uh, as we, we said we would. We took, you know, uh, took the exams, the trial seriously, and the results were very favorable. Uh, kids, kids would prefer it. So, uh, so it's coming, coming our way. And it was also a trial for us to make sure that uh, we do indeed uh, have the capabilities to make this run smoothly. Um, our infrastructure, our, our technology infrastructure is um, in very good shape, as you know. Uh, it looks like comparatively to other schools, uh, our, our infrastructure is set up well to do this. Uh, so we think it will be fine. Right? Um, but just to follow up, any questions on 11.1? <coughs> okay, 11.2, uh, Promising Practices nominee. I believe we've alerted you in the past that this is an annual activity through the uh, Superintendent's Consortium of the 13 Towns. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick uh, and Sarah Hathaway as the board coordinator will be honoring Matthew Connors uh, as this year's nominee. That will be over at the Aza Waters uh, Mansion tomorrow morning, correct? Talk about 8 o'clock or so. Uh, and certainly just wanted a chance to uh, highlight Matt Connors, whom you've seen before, he's presented to you before. It's, uh, our engineering uh, lead teacher there, um, and quite a deserving uh, uh, candidate at this point. All right. Any questions on 11.2? Okay, moving on to 11.3. Uh, Wednesday, uh, we dedicated our faculty meeting for teachers' appreciation, uh, and I should extend that to faculty appreciation. Um, we really don't differentiate in that type of activity. It was also Nurses Appreciation Week. Uh, so we um, have done this annually, uh, that during this, this week in time, we uh, purposefully set a faculty meeting up uh, with essentially uh, appreciation type activities. We've done some nice uh, themed things. It's an opportunity for the administration to uh, show its appreciation, uh, extend uh, your, your thoughts and well wishes as well uh, to them uh, for all that they do for our kids. Um, and really, when you're talking about the nurses, for all they do for all of us, including the staff, uh, always looking out, taking care of us. Uh, this year's theme, uh, we did a, a good humor day um, and celebrated with good humor ice cream bars. Happened to uh, get our hands on a real ice cream truck. Uh, it may or may not have driven it up right on the lawn outside the calf, and they all came out and uh, myself and Tom Mellon served ice creams out the window with the, uh, the great music blaring and all that good stuff. Um, we made the milkshakes uh, inside. And it was a nice day, but you know, it's, um, it's tough. And this time of year, they're, they're, they're pretty tired, right? Uh, it's, we're getting down to the end here, and people are pretty exhausted, so it's a, a nice time and an opportunity to uh, let them know that we, we think about them, care about them, appreciate what they do, and do something nice for them. So that was this year's team. Uh, it was a lot, of, a lot of fun. A lot of good humor had by all, right? With our ice cream hats on. <laughs> Questions on 11.3?
All right, 11.4. We just had our junior senior prom on uh, Saturday. I believe it's a record uh, setter. Um, we're into records around here. We like breaking records. We had 618 uh, students attend. Uh, we uh, are still maintaining our contract with the DCU Center. Uh, we, we really enjoy that venue. Uh, as it's about as secure of a venue as you can get. There's one escalator that goes in, um, and the one that goes down is turned off, and they're in there, right? And we can keep our eye on them. Not that they, they don't misbehave anyway. We have, uh, you know, no incidents there. Uh, great staff there at DCU works with our staff. So it's a, a nice, safe, secure event. Everyone had a great time, made it home safely. Uh, and again, um, 618 kids having a, a very memorable moment. So it's a, a nice thing to report to you. No fire alarms this year? No okay. fire alarm. Yeah, last year the DCU That's caught on fire, fire. if you recall. Right? <laughs> and we spent an hour and a half yeah, outside. Right, right, right. And then it rained on us while yeah, we were yeah, out there. Um, the highlight of that was it was uh, Mr. Woodward's uh, 54th birthday. Uh, and they sang him, sang happy birthday to him in the St. Vincent's parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, less eventful in that regard, right? Uh, any questions on the prom report, 11.4? Okay, 11.5. Uh, last night was the, <clears throat> today, Thursday, this was, uh, yeah. Well, it's been a busy week, pardon me. Um, the Mac Scholarship Night was on Tuesday night. Um, we are part of uh, the Milford Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, five of our towns, uh, Bellingham, Hopedale, Menden, Upton, and Milford are all part of the Milford Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so it's obviously a significant sub subset of our uh, sending districts. Uh, the Milford Area Chamber of Commerce ultimately serves 10 towns, I believe, in total. And we are represented by five of them. So the uh, Milford Area Chamber of Commerce uh, has this annual event. I think it's their 17th year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's the celebration of the top 10% of the graduating class. Uh, so I am joined there by uh, the other uh, principals uh, from the, the 10 towns. Uh, and uh, Tri-County is also part of that activity as well. So it's Blackstone Valley Tech, Tri-County, and, and the high schools from each of the 10 towns uh, participate. It's about five, 550 uh, students that are honored there, uh, guests there. And a uh, nice dinner. Um, it, does, it does run a little late. Uh, we got out there about 10, 15 or so, but gave everybody a chance to uh, not only be recognized, but where they're going to, to college or what they're doing uh, next year for their futures. And, um, also had uh, representative uh, uh, Murphy uh, spoke, uh, Murray, sorry, so, uh, spoke, uh, so it's, it's well-recognized event and, and nice to be part of. Any question on 11.5? Okay, uh, 11.6, I have uh, some out-of-state trips to consider. Uh, there is uh, an additional trip that was not listed here uh, that I spoke to the uh, chair about, but why don't we start with the known items um, with 11.6a. Uh, this is a recurrence of, or should I say, the second annual uh, motorsports team <coughs> trip to Lebanon Valley, New York, uh, up to Lebanon Valley Dragway, uh, where we had a great event last year. It's essentially the same model. Um, actually, the difference is we have no, no costs for uh, food this year. As the students demonstrated last year, they would prefer to bring all of their own hamburgers and hot dogs. All they ask is we bring the grill. Uh, so um, no, no cost to the school in that regard. Uh, I think I put in a small amount. No, no tolls either because we, we have the uh, transponders. So essentially it's um, 30 students and a number of chaperones there. At least four of us will take them out there. I'll make the motion. Be back the same day. Second. Motion made. <coughs> motion made and second to approve the trip to West Lebanon. Questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. I figure I should probably you know, West Lebanon, New York. Correct. Yes, not Lebanon, the country. Or New Hampshire. Yeah, right. Or Lebanon, New Hampshire. It's a three day or something. 
Okay, 11.6B uh, is a painting and design uh, trip. Uh, this is a tour of the mansions in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, we actually um, already have uh, the, the a whole class up for class. This is the juniors in P&D who are going down to specifically look at some aspects of architecture and interior design. Make a motion. Second. Motion made and second. Questions, comments, discussion? All those in favor of approving the trip to Newport, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Your add on. Okay, the add on uh, I just received today, so I apologize. Uh, this is for the construction technology uh, sophomore and freshman. Uh, they, were, they are asking to uh, go, uh, let me just say, to Cranston, Rhode Island, and Oakland, Rhode Island to a CK Custom Cabinet Company uh, and uh, Millwork One Incorporated. They're going to get tours of their facilities, uh, their manufacturing facilities. Uh, so it's two different stops uh, in uh, Rhode Island that day. They will be back, uh, I believe at 8.15 a.m., be back at 1 p.m. Uh, and uh, the instructors from uh, Construction Technology, uh, Mark Fitzpatrick, will be taking them on uh, as the chaperone. School van, no costs. Uh, I'll make a motion. Motion made and second. Motion made and second. And I post my question, was going to be the, the delay in it. Was it just one of those things that popped up or? I think it was a late invitation that they received. Uh, they turned it in uh, today to me. We got it all, it went through the chain of signatures and, and checking. Uh, I looked at the calendar to June, and I said, we're not going to make it right, by uh, a couple of days. No, anyway, it's just good to understand, because I know you work really hard to make sure they know to get them in early, but obviously some things are out of their control. And I will have his brother just tell him, <laughs> you know, you get no, those no, no, things in. Fortunately, he has another brother. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure that they were, you know, obviously they got a late invitation. Yeah. Uh, but um, I'm not sure he was even realizing when the June, this is a trip in June, uh, that our committee would not meet before they were going. What was the date of the trip? I know you said it was an 8 to 1. Uh, we were 11th and 12th for one. Yeah, the same day. It's, it, they're both June 11th and 12th. Right. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. Not 5 accurate. and 6 and 11 and 12. So one, one group on 11 and 6 would be the freshman, the 11 and 12 would be the sophomore. And I think we meet, and we meet on the twenty first. The twenty first. Yeah. No, no. Like I said, I know some things are out of their control. Just that information is usually helpful to find out what's going on there. These are my good family. We try not to do that to you, uh, and, and likewise, we appreciate when you've been flexible with us to do it. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments, discussion on the, the these trips? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the trips to Cranston and Oakland, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries, those trips are approved. Thank you very much, Mr. Steele. Well, it's not 705. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I was going to say, in fairness, it wasn't like we were, he was worried about the timing anyway. He Thank just you. said to be off enjoying the ride. I appreciate it. Next item on the agenda, Mr. Lavin, budget report. Yes, the budget report. Happy to say we have a budget. And the score so far is nine to one. Okay, so let's start off. One time. One time. We'll talk, we'll talk to Chet. From Milbury. And, and I went to the town meeting and we sat there and there wasn't a question and just went by with no problems. I think Anthony was more interested in watching the, the um, town manager and the school department fight. He enjoyed that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Yes. <laughs> OK. Any questions for Chet? No. Actually, I, it's not uncommon that much of the uh, groundwork is set up as a finance committee meeting. And I know I've reported on finance committee meetings. But just to refer it back, Chet and I had a uh, pretty whatever, uh, significant presentation on the Saturday morning for the finance committee. 
that I believe uh, resolved the issues that they had, and even uh, a little bit of confusion by the town administrator, okay, which rectified um, our numbers uh, to the, to the in, I guess, actually reduced them. Yeah, we actually reduced them significantly when he was yeah. told he was adding to things that should have been added. Yeah, we, we, we he, had, he had used a number which was higher than our request. Okay, and so we just, in good faith, wanted people to be aware that no, that's not what I requested, as you voted, as the board was speaking with. And therefore, so we had kind of a good news story that we didn't even anticipate. Yeah. 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 Well, he actually gave him money to redirect <coughs> another way, I guess. You know, but, but we want to make sure that nobody thought that we inflated the number over and above what you voted and what our request was. Right. But right. unfortunately, that was <coughs> it all worked out, I think. I think when we inform him of the number that we're coming next year, he might be a little more taken back. And I'm not complaining about the number of students that there was an over increase by this year. It was a big amount. I'm very happy with that. Yeah. I just feel bad for the colleagues who I took them away from. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be coming for them. I'm sure you'll be coming I'm doing a tour this year. Yeah. Get it back. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um, earlier in the season, uh, both Dr. Fitzpatrick and I attended the Northridge FinCon. The um, May 1st annual town meeting, um, I did have to miss due to work constraints, so I will turn it back over to Dr. Fitzpatrick for um, the meeting analysis. Yeah, uh, not that it was interesting, because uh, the long-term moderator of attorney health <coughs> will return from uh, a medical uh, you know, situation. Uh, to uh, serve as moderator, uh, but his health uh, didn't stay steady, and he was not able to finish the meeting. Okay, and so there was some frustration by uh, uh, one member of the audience that was rather unfortunate uh, to say that um, when our item came up, it, it was not challenged, uh, and I'd like to thank the Finance Committee uh, for their support. Uh, interesting, I have to say this, that the local school system had um, two pages of special warrant article outside of their budget. Uh, and so I, I guess one of the reasons why we might not have had challenges because the real concern that the, the local system had was to, to uh, shepherd through a, a, a healthy list of special warrant articles on the municipal side. And, and so uh, that, that did go through. Uh, and, and our budget was kind of like a you know, non-entity in uh, what was it, what was accomplished there. So glad to have the support. Uh, there was a significant increase in students and uh, uh, and uh, in our assessment in that, in that community. So it was a it was a good one to have. Okay. 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 And with Mrs. Koopman, I attended the FinCom meeting with the doc, uh, and up to this very easy, so to speak. Um, they're very uh, accepting of. PBT and what we do. I was not unable to attend the uh, annual meeting, so I'll turn that over yeah, to the, the town meeting was uh, not, not a, a, a debated item, uh, and uh, we, as, as Dave points out, we were pretty much on friendly turf, uh, and um, people were kind enough to extend congratulations, so and applause and recognition for what we've done, what's accomplished, what our students have done, some of which was presented earlier this evening, uh, and it was a favorable vote. Okay. Dave's not here. Doc, maybe not. Dennis. 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 Uh, Dennis. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, the finance committee presentation went fine, and the town meeting uh, went fine. And made it a little difficult. Okay. Douglas, myself, and Anthony. Once the town meeting, in the Doug, town of Douglas this year decided to put Valley Tech as a warrant article versus tying it again with their own school system. And we came up for a vote. Taxpayers of the town voted for budget, but I don't think the taxpayers of the town realized it was a no vote because it was not the number that Valley Tech had submitted to the town. Mm -hmm. So basically, everybody that voted yes was really a no. I mean, that's as easy, Anthony, I don't know if you want to There were fall. a few things. Um, it, it seemed like a very uh, predetermined event, if you will. The front cover of the, the uh, warrant booklet uh, essentially had a description, a paragraph, if you will, that the 
it's a uh, dire state of financial affairs in the town, budgetary affairs, uh, mm -hmm. was primarily due to the two private schools that draw students and funds from their uh, town budget, and they went on the list of Blackstone Valley Tech and Norfolk Aggie as two private, private schools. And so there was you know, already a <coughs> sentiment uh, not to recognize uh, Valley Tech as their career technical system, uh, of which they are you know, significant owners, uh, but rather to 9% uh, I believe. 9% ownership of the school, rather than present it as an adversarial private school uh, draining their funds. And the primary uh, cause, if you will, but if you read that paragraph, uh, for their current situation. Um, the bulk of the meeting was about um, losing numerous uh, town services and resources, uh, was, you know, not having enough funding to maintain basic operations, uh, town library, and things of that nature. <clears throat> police fire, etc. And so, uh, as Mr. Lavin pointed out, uh, I believe it was a, a new practice to break out the Valley Tech budget request as a separate article. Uh, so they took it out of the omnibus uh, and made it a separate article. And when they put it in a separate article, they essentially um, uh, replaced the requested amount with the minimum uh, funded amount. They did put a description of that in the Warren article yeah. that they were doing that. Uh, which was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy, seventy-five thousand dollars less than our requested amount. Uh, and so, as Mr. Levin pointed out, procedurally, if the town votes less than right. uh, a full request, request, it's tantamount to a no vote. Um, confusion, if you will, with the, the citizenry when you do things like that. But I think it was, uh, as I said, very, very predetermined, if you will, that the Finance committee certainly didn't support us. That was evident at the FinCon meeting, uh -huh. uh, but um, it was not going to be uh, very likely uh, yeah. to, to pass a budget for us in that town. I, I mean, I also find it interesting because not only is that misleading because Valley Tech is a it's a community that sends <coughs> students here. It's a public school, right. mm -hmm. but it's also misleading because the Aggie is a public school. It's a school choice situation. It's not a private school, the parents are, you know, up in the tuition and going out there. That's, Those things are not factual, and not the, to, yeah. to suggest that it's not factual, but it does act out the sentiment that we received uh, uh, at the final meeting. Mm. Fair to say. <clears throat> All right, a couple things happened uh, since the uh, you know, finance committee meeting and the town meeting. First is uh, no, uh, several uh, citizens from Douglas uh, have conveyed their apologies, I guess, to, frankly, because they were embarrassed by what they said, the behavior of the Finance Committee and their interactions with me and with you. Uh, so I, I, I thank people for their concern. The second, there may have been some fear factor here. When the town meeting took place, uh, there was an override ballot that had yet to be taken place, uh, yet to have happened, uh, and there was this fear about the total number of dollars the town had available. Uh, however, the townspeople, uh, on a closed vote, subsequently supported the override uh, at both the town meeting and the ballot box. And so, uh, since that action at the town meeting, as encouraged by the finance committee, uh, the, the town uh, has secured uh, additional spending capacity to, to its override. Okay. What is it? One and a half? One, one point eight? One eight. I think it's one point eight. One eight. I think. Okay. So, but they didn't know that at town meeting. How does that, that, that no-vote affect us? It, uh, it, when the 13 towns came together 53 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. they came together with a condition that for operating budgets, if two-thirds of the towns support something, all towns must honor it. So as soon as nine towns approve a budget, then uh, all towns have to honor it as you voted it. Okay. And if the refusal to do so, the state won't allow them to set their tax rate. So the state has a power play to in the event they had to use it, okay? okay? But once again, the town has a greater spending capacity than they knew uh, and took it, and, and they voted to the town meeting today. So, that answer your question? No. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to learn. No, but it's no, a good thing to learn. Good thing to learn.
It's one of the ways in which the 13 towns were able to be eligible for this investment uh, and have 12 other partners to do it and be eligible for the high standards that generate so many dollars in grants and in state subsidies. So is a, it's, it's participation in this consortium uh, has significant value to all 13 towns. And it came, like any other partnership, with certain conditions. I have just one thing, Doc. The part that bothers me the most is, you know, I've lived in Douglas for a long time, and you can't even get any of the selectmen or any of the finance committee members to even come into the school to even take an hour of their time to see what we really do get. But they stand there and, you know, and they just throw, you know, allegations and, you know, disrespect for the school. In my own personal opinion, when they should be here to see what goes on. Then if you have something bad to say, or something disrespectful, I'll understand that, but you need to see it firsthand before you even stand there and say, hey, you know, if you don't know what's going on, you shouldn't be saying things to be seen. If I may, for the benefit of the listening public, then I would reaffirm our commitment in having members of both of the Finance Committee and Selectmen right. uh, to reach out to us for a mutually scheduled opportunity uh, to tour the, their investment. And, and, and one of the reasons why so many students from Sutton, I'm sorry, in this case, Douglas, wish to be here. Okay. Um, I'm glad to give them that tour. Yes, I'd love to. So, I'd love to be here that day with them. Many of our finance committee members and selectmen from other towns have done that. Mm -hmm. Not so so much in that. Right. Mr. Fenn. Uh, just a question, Doc. Is this um, a tactic that could be translated to other towns? Where they put it on a warrant item as opposed to an omnibus situation for the, uh, for the amount of money that they could spread if some chose to do so in the future years? Uh, the, yeah, I would say the problem is not moving it from an omnibus to a separate warrant article. It's when you ignore the voted amount voted by the regional elected school committee. So uh, there's no issue. There's plenty of towns that have a separate warrant article uh, and put in the number you voted for the assessment. Right, but putting it at, at a lesser amount. Because I know Millville did that a number of years back, remember? Yeah, but it, you could do that in an omnibus article just as much as you do in a separate. So it's a matter of really having it less than what's been voted. Is that's, it? that's the issue, not the format. They're, they're ignoring your, your, your elected vote. Okay. It'd be nice to vote on what is presented, not what people think they Well, ideally, the citizens should hear uh, you know, and should take action on the voted assessment number. There's some conversation of whether or not there's an obligation to do that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. And then, to, and, and if the finance committee doesn't support it, so be it. They would recommend, you know, that the citizens not support your voted amount, and then you could make a subsequent amendment for a lesser amount or an increased amount, by the way. Right. <laughs> yeah, that just seems logical to do it that way as opposed to. The way they've done it. That's, that's the, that's so the, if we all vote on this, we, we send it in, the finance committee gets it, and they don't even give us the respect of putting it on the on the on the on the war item right. at the amount of money that all of us have sat here for a full year and put together. Right. Yeah. But that's pretty ignorant right. to, well, to do something like that. Yeah. It's discourteous at least. Uh, indeed. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pastor Jim, Jim and I were both at the follow-up uh, town meeting um, earlier this week, Tuesday, in the middle of a rainstorm. Okay, uh, and um, uh, Oxbridge, uh, the finance committee uh, fully endorsed Valley Tech's request. And once the citizens got through a few other issues that had nothing to do with us, they also supported us. Good. Crafton um, town meeting was Monday. I was there by myself. No, 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 some of the special things our students have been doing. Um, you know, some complaints about uh, the reduction in the number of students in Grafton. So you know, I'm not making a push to talk to as many people as, as I can to get the number of applications up because we are at uh, 60 students in the school, which is about a 15 year low for Grafton. So, um, you know, I kind of take that personally and I want to get, get a 
as much word out about the school as possible. Grafton is a town that puts the budget on a separate Warren article, and there's one for uh, the main budget and one for the, the capital uh, expense part that, that Grafton owns for the construction. Uh, both both, <coughs> both votes were nearly unanimous in favor of, so um, no, no, no issues uh, from the Grafton town meeting. Okay, good. Wilfred? Well, for the Finance Committee, uh, Doc attended the meeting I had a prior commitment. Committee, so when I came to the town meeting, uh, Barbara and myself were ready to discuss anything that would have came up in it. They spent the money on it. Mm -hmm. okay. Jared, Milvo? Uh, Milvo's an interesting one. <laughs> it usually is. Uh, we had a, a special town meeting. Uh, first of all, we met through the finance committee before, and uh, they were impressed and told me in the QT that they, they thought that there would be no issue. Uh, we had an emergency or a special town meeting uh, about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, and that was for a two and a half override um, uh, at the total of $1.8 million uh, on a $6 million budget. Uh, didn't go well, uh, and they voted it down uh, at that, straw, at that uh, special town meeting. So then we went to the town meeting last Monday night. Uh, within that town meeting uh, that started at uh, Seven and ended up quarter past twelve in the morning. Um, it was a short one this year. Yeah, uh, on that particular one, uh, there was uh, a situation where we did get the uh, override uh, at least to now a town vote on June sixteenth or nineteenth or the other right sixteenth. Uh, so that we've now moved it from a no vote to a new vote that will be on the uh, June nineteenth. If the town votes to approve the override, which now has been reduced to $1 million, um, our budget will go through. Um, so there was two budgets presented that night. That's why it took so long. If indeed the town says, nope, we're not even going to allow a $1 million uh, on an override, uh, our budget would then fail. So um, I, I can't deliver to you yet that we have a Success, I can only tell you that it's pending. Best I can tell you. We did have one gentleman that uh, took, uh, uh, tried to take a uh, pot shot at the BVT. Uh, it was a pretty front crowd that night. And uh, thanks with uh, Curtis and myself, we, uh, we helped him back to his seat. So we're fine. That's kind of where it ended up. So I, I really can't deliver anything to you yet until. Uh, we have that uh, special vote on the on the override. But if it goes through, then we're good. If it doesn't, then we're not. Simple as that. Since Julie's not here, not yeah. Well, since the committee might not feel quite as comfortable as they did a moment ago before Mr. Phil's Mr. Finn's presentation with no bill, and let me point out that there are three additional towns that have yet to meet. All three are expected to be favorable. Okay, those would be the towns of Bellingham, Blackstone, and Hopedale. Don't fret. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, yes, Sutton um, um, was also uh, earlier this week. That's why I wasn't in Milford or Millville or Grafton. Uh, and uh, it, it was a favorable vote. Uh, however, the, the Finance Committee voted, I think, 6 0 in favor of Valley Tech's budget. But they did something that, that bothered me and you could even say offended me uh, in that they, they had a narrative in their warrant that uh, took issue uh, with the way in which the Valley Tech budget uh, was received and they identified issues raised at the finance committee meeting. And the, the issues, um, and, you know, uh, they said that um, the finance committee uh, thought that it was un inappropriate for Valley Tech to ask for administrative positions, plural, while the local system was cutting staff. And, uh, we, we did not ask for administrative positions, as you know. Uh, we had, you know, anything close to that would be the reinstatement of a secretary who has significant data collection responsibilities, I think will also help us in getting more grants. Uh, and so I, I just felt that was not factual and, and not fair. Um, the, the other thing is we have more students. I, I don't know if Sutton has more. I think they have fewer. Uh, and um, the when, when the town uh, acted on its 
warrant. Uh, it had a variety, about a half a dozen special items for the Sutton school system, sidewalks and computers, right? This was fine, all on the municipal side. <laughs> so I, I, I don't I don't see where there's a fair you know comparison since all the things that we request are in our assessment single item request. Uh, the next issue that, that the narrative uh, that the citizens uh, you know were given uh, said that we were cautioned as far as we should not be using one-time E&D funds, excess and deficiency funds. And, and I took issue with that and said, wait a second, we have led the, the world on cautioning people about not using one-time funds for reoccurring costs. We have used excess and my, I said my school committee and my finance committee have used excess and deficiency funds for at least the past 15 years. So that is one aspect of proving that it doesn't, you know, it's not one time. Secondly, the very finance committee that this narrative, you know, uh, takes issue with, uh, uh, initiate the criticism, is that um, they made a recommendation how we should use next year's E&D. Well, if they can recommend what we're going to use next year's E&D, they certainly can't argue that it does. It only exists at one time. Right. Which is it? So um, they, they 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 detailed uh, that excess and deficiency in the future should be used for OPEP, but I had already agreed and I alerted the full school committee that we should give greater consideration. We had a considerable debate at the, fund, at the budget building meeting here relative to the best way to use excess and deficiency. Um, and generally, there was a criticism that the assessment was too high. Well, we use E&D to lower the assessment. If you use it for something else, OPEP or something else, that means you wouldn't have it available to use it to reduce the assessment. So which is it? Is the assessment too high? With E and D offset, or you know, should, should we have used E and D differently? So, uh, I, I ended up speaking to the citizens. I, I alerted the finance committee chair in advance that I was going to do that, um, and I, I told the citizens, and those are a sample of some of the concerns, that our school committee and the superintendent value the relationship and, and the pro, uh, professional uh, experiences and interactions with the Sutton Finance Committee and all finance committees. And, um, and we have given credence to any recommendation. We, we eagerly recruit and encourage recommendations for cost-effective strategies. Uh, within five days of me, Julie and I meeting at the Finance Committee uh, in Sutton, I provided them and you with a detailed summary of, of the conversation to plant a seed for, and certainly proving that we took their their recommendations to heart. I looked at what happened at the Finance Committee as suggestions and recommendations, not criticism. And I, I, I frankly thought the narrative was a cheap shot and, and, and not, not reflective. The Finance Committee Chair softened it with his remarks, at this, at, uh, both to me privately and, and also to the citizens, saying that um, we have a good working relationship and that we have been responsive. And so I, I felt like a kid who got an F on his report card with a, with a note saying, you know, works well with others. You know, I, I don't get it. So in um, any case, I hope that that's not a, a new characteristic of our interactions with that. But I'm appreciative of the 6-0 unanimous vote of the Finance Committee. So an awkward spot, uh, and, and we didn't have any challenges. Um, and that's the way that went. So I know we take pride in, in uh, how we do our cost-effective business. When we don't ask for bonds, for the, when we, we ask our, we negotiate with our employees to make a contribution for OPEP. Uh, in Oxbridge, for example, okay, they, they, OPEP was a big conversation in as many places. They have a $50 million obligation, okay, in Oxbridge under the county. Uh, and they, they, they were making, an, uh, they, they were proposed, I think, 50000 to be used against it. Okay. Well, this is, you know, from the municipal side. The other thing is, not to pick on Sutton, but I'm a, I rather doubt the Sutton school system contributed money for OPEP. I'm sure the town of Sutton contributed for OPEP. But I doubt, there's a, in our case, in, in our, we received $30 more per student, okay? We, that's all we get <laughs> from the state. And we have no other pocket to take it from. So you have to take it away from the kids to do and our OPEP contribution was greater in the, as we built a budget, and we were we were concerned. A 4.74 budget is one of the highest that we've ever advanced. 
uh, and I won't say we're sheepers, but we cut back so we wouldn't be well over 5% to put money. Maybe we need to look at a special warrant article going forward for OPEB only. I mean, if you say to the towns, here's the budget, and we need $100,000 know, uh, for OPEB, Sutton, your, your contribution will be 9000 I'm not sure that's a good strategy. But we, we will, like health insurance or anything else, we'll look at alternatives. I don't want to be too sour about this. Um, but the citizens voted in, in you know, um, overwhelming support uh, for that. Okay. So I'm glad we were mm -hmm. able to secure that. So, I was going to say, I mean, notwithstanding whether, you know, the uncertainty in the low right now, but whether we have 9, 10, 11, and how many years have we gone with 12 and 0, we approach every town as if they're the only one. We value every relationship right. every town. Yeah. We will attend all three of these, yeah. fully prepared to answer any and all questions, and continue to further the mission. Yeah, I don't have to manufacture any argument that is inconsistent with it with the respect in which you hold 126 finance committee members, 60 select persons, five state reps, the two senators, and any other any citizen. We value these relationships. We spend countless hours developing this budget. Uh, and, um, you know, that's the way we do for our business. Therefore, I get a little, you know, I get a little bristly, I guess, when somebody suggests that we don't do business that way, because I know we do. And I know how, how passionate we are about it. Oh, and, I, and I know some people worry about the whether or not we're still on our mission. Um, I just look back at skills. Skills is about the trade. Skills is about the career technical education. Skills is about our mission. It's the whole purpose of why schools like this were developed and designed. And look at the success we have at those um, those competitions. Not just district, not just state, but even nationals. And we've had students go on to worlds. So. I think that's, uh, you know, that's a very important part of the message is that we are on mission and you can see it from the results at skills that we are showing these kids how to do the trade and how to do it very well. Make them much better employees and you know, much more, much better in the workforce. Validation. Mm -hmm. okay. right. Anything else on the budget? That's it, right. Next item on the agenda, Dr. Fitzpatrick. Uh, according to our examination of the previous meeting, uh, school meeting, uh, we held a public hearing on school choice, had a, a significant discussion about school choice, but did not cast a formal vote about school choice, which we must do. So it, there is a motion that's being encouraged um, that supports the conversation uh, that we had last time. Hi, Anthony. It's hereby moved that the Blackstone Valley Vocation, Voca Vocational Regional School District Committee agree to not participate in school choice during the 2018-2019 school year. Second. second. Motion made and second. Questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries that we will not participate in school choice in the upcoming school year. Uh, thank you, Chairman Members of the Committee. Item 13.2, I believe we have alerted all uh, uh, school committee members that we're in the next cycle for uh, nomination for elections uh, and the state information pretty much suggests 50 signatures. That's right. That's right. All right. And, uh, I, I, and I just, you, you, can, you can acquire uh, signatures in any of the member communities, although they have to be on different sheets so they can be certified by the town clerk of that town. So frankly, you can get 50 signatures from a town other than the one you live in. Right. Okay, but, uh, you know. Um, but, uh, for those who don't go home often, I guess. But <laughs> so, uh, uh, in any case, uh, we're now in that cycle, right, uh, of um, you know submitting. We will we will uh, provide a courtesy alert to the town clerks that the election season for us is up and about. Uh, we hope you'll continue uh, to serve. You've been a particularly effective board, uh, and uh, you know. But we want to make sure. And I believe everybody has their paper. Anyone who does not. I, I serve as the clerk for, the, for, the, uh, for that process, district clerk. So um, the, um, I don't think we've had any issues. Um, we, years ago, we had the town clerk from Bellingham, Kathy Harvey, who's the, the spouse of the former chair of the school committee.
come up and, and swear everyone in. But we have subsequently discovered that some of the local town clerks prefer to swear you in their person. So like a home rule kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it probably be best that, that once uh, the election process goes through, that you stop in to your local town clerk and be certain. Uh, we'll win our elections. Yeah, no, so we have to win yeah, first. That's true. Yeah. That's tough. Um, <laughs> anybody might want to be your uh, incumbency drives a you know, first name on the ballot for, uh, under your community, but you're on the ballot in all 13 towns. Okay. So, uh, any questions? If you have questions along the way, let us know. And being the first town on the list, I tend to get the most votes. <laughs> it's a forty something thousand for the I would say it's pretty close. But. <laughs> <laughs> he had one eye closed on his uh, head tilted the side, wasn't it? I almost <clears throat> lost the blank the first time. Yeah. Blank got a lot of votes. <laughs> uh, any other questions on that? Item 13.3. I think we have a document that confirms that the state has once again provided us with favorable, full approval status. Of the nursing program. You sure that Any questions on that? Seeing none, we move on. Consistent with uh, accountability process uh, and our, our professional understanding, uh, we thought it appropriate as we near the, towards the close of the uh, next cycle that you receive a progress report on the, the uh, performance goals that identified for me. Uh, and uh, some evidence of attainment relative to those goals. Uh, I believe that refers to eight goals, and not all has been completed because the whole, you know, we've got a couple months left. But I hope that serves as uh, tangible evidence of uh, productivity, I guess. Okay. Any questions on that? We have a, an official written notification of uh, a, a resignation uh, of our, our long-term English teacher graduate of school uh, and uh, a, a published poet, among other things, uh, has um, fulfilled a long-term ambition to work in a uh, religious setting uh, and uh, will be leaving at the end of the school year, I believe, uh, and, and making that transition. Treatise, who was the son of a former uh, chief of police, and we will move on. And he, he, uh, he was a very dedicated individual. He, he made a special point of, of making certain that um, Anthony and myself were uh, supportive of this and, and understood his reasons for, for uh, doing something which he said he's always wanted. We have a verbal uh, resignation from uh, our 17-year academic coordinator, but we do not have a written one. Uh, so obviously, negotiations have not been finalized. Uh, she's been um, exploring an opportunity to join a sister, both tech system, and it comes as no surprise to us that um, other both tech systems would, would like to recruit our people. So, uh, but we uh, will we'll keep you posted on, on as that becomes more official. Kind of like Dustin or Troy, he hasn't yet returned to the land. <laughs> any, any questions? So we don't. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. The way you said that was very. Yeah. Oh, it's only May. It's, it's that time of year. Actually. <laughs> All right. Next item: new business. Does any school committee member have any new business? To uh, yes, I had an Upton resident uh, just recently ask me a couple of questions, uh, one of which the doc answered. Uh, the other one was, by the way, this Upton resident uh, is a 78 grad of BDP. Uh, he's recently retired, and he's at, inquired as to why we don't have night school anymore, or if it's in the future. Uh, and his uh, concern of thoughts is there are a lot of people out there, obviously, that could you know, that not school age that could uh, use a little education, use a little vocational education. Uh, has there been any thoughts with respect to night school? Uh, in the 25 years I've uh, 
we made forward. I, we, I inherited um, a, a night school program and that was uh, in the, the red. Okay, um, and so we, we tried uh, three different efforts to reestablish it. But the, the condition in which the program was, it was, I think it was like back in the day, $15, $20 to come in, uh, actually, um, John LeBrun was particularly concerned about what was happening in the night school as far as wear and tear and some thefts and some other kinds of things, uh, not, not advantageous to the district. Uh, and so we, we frankly were losing money. But during, before, it, 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 yes, the erosion that took place that drove the program into the status it was, you know, when I arrived, uh, was good news for Assabet and Beta. So they decided to, to expand their, their eating programs uh, sub substantially. And they marketed, they even hired someone to you know, flood the newspapers and other marketing things. And so they picked up uh, business that uh, people might have thought of coming here. Uh, and so that may have contributed even further to the, you know, the, the lack of income to, to cover the cost. And so um, before we lost, actually lost money, we, the, the, um, I'm going to give you a notice. It was like 15,000, and it was like 11,000 on the kitty, and then it was 8,000 on the kitty. Anyway, it was, de you know, it was deteriorating. Before we got into the real red, taking money from the daytime program, uh, then we, we, did, we stopped. Okay. Um, so uh, I know that the evening programs are considered to be evening trade preparatory, uh, which could be like the licensed trade preparations, electrical, and some of the others. Um, and um, some of the people who were teaching those courses wanted more and more benefits, which impacted the, the, given the finances of that. And uh, the, the other more common uh, evening program are evening practical arts, okay, which is you know the potteries and how do you, you know change the oil in the car or something. All right, um, and um, the and, and people like to do that. I mean, not to say it was appealing. Uh, but the other opportunity, those opportunities have existed at the other sister schools, they're not too far away, Marlboro and Charlton. Uh, that, um, and so they kind of took over the business part of it. So that, My experience going back when uh, I came here for carpentry, right. night school, it wasn't so much to learn or uh, get a carpentry education, it was to use the equipment. Yeah. So I don't, didn't see it, or don't see it as a benefit in that sense. You're not going to learn a trade coming here at night. Right, and I would call it evening practical arts. Okay, in other words, you learn how to, you know, to maybe make a sawhorse and then use it. I mean, you, you know, it's kind of basic, but you might tell the, the, the old versions of industrial arts, yeah. you know, handy tools and learn how to use them. You know, it wasn't intended to, that, that's the evening trade preparatory. That's very different, okay, uh, than the evening practical arts. But sorry. I remember at least once or twice over the years us talking about that in committee meetings. And one of the challenges, especially in today's environment, was with all the teams, clubs, and student activities going many nights well past 6 o'clock. Mm. We, we struggled with trying to think about how would we separate adult learners from the kids who are here using the school very late at night. Um, and that sort of drove us down the path when we discussed that in committee meetings that um, we didn't want to, we, we, we didn't have a solution to, to partition off adult learning sections of the school since we do have so much of the student population here late into the evening. Uh, you, you just beat me to the punch. I'm saying that, yeah, that would that, that is additional rationale that, yeah. that I support fully that they contributed to the decision, okay? <coughs> and our kids don't need them. Uh, there are some exceptions now, though. I mean, we added the nursing program, which is structured. It's not evening. It's kind of afternoon, but it, it's got a window that, that allows us to not disrupt. Uh, and you can see all, this, all the extra effort that our staff give to these kids. There's nobody goes home anymore, and the clubs are involved in it. The other thing is we just recently received a manufacturing grant. So we are selective in offering kind of intense programs that, that will be available to the citizens of the area who have that interest. Uh, but, but there's grant money that comes that subsidizes it so we don't take the risk of, of losing money. So.
I was just saying, it's kind of interesting is that like with the growing student body and with the increased clubs activity and the fact that everybody's here, it's already placing additional strain on facilities to get the, to get the campus ready for the next day. And then in the shortened summer and things like that because they're trying to do what they can with everybody going on around them and then add another yeah. program that takes up a wing or something. They've got to completely alter their structure. Well, also keep in mind we have twice the students we had. Right. Yeah. Yes. Anthony, yeah. Just as a point of interest, though, as you bring up the security concern, I do Corey check all of the LPN students. Okay, so they, they have all been cleared by me uh, prior to starting the program, and that is also what we would intend to do uh, as we pursue this manufacturing evening program. Which you would have to do, especially if the kids are going to be here in the building. Well, it's not just, just to the, not Anthony's just, point, yeah. just to get his point. Uh, you really can't separate them, and so the next best alternative is to board check them. Yeah. So, so having said that, uh, if you're aware uh, of uh, a given interest, okay, uh, sometimes people like tax planning, uh, you know, beauty products, I don't know, that sometimes there's this particular interest that we could always examine uh, in a controlled environment, uh, you know, uh, a niche, okay. Uh, and look at whether or not we could do something, uh, but not reinstate probably the full-fledged program that people had years ago. I was going to say, this, one, this wasn't a to go down a path of absolutely not. This is just a, we have to, there's a lot, to, a lot of work involved in how we impact everybody. I remember back in the day when they had night schools, sometimes it was, you know, the night school would do, it was a different teacher and a different instructor, and the teachers come in the next day, the students are ready to run equipment yeah. and the equipment's broken but nobody said a word yeah. and it's just one of those things where it's hard to control you know things do happen yeah. but you know but then you've got your training things for the students now what do they do right they can't learn if something's broken so maybe learn how to fix it but that's about all you can do yeah so no, those are the things we have to wait yeah. too not to have a hundred reasons not to do it but 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 yeah. what what john is getting into is the fact that if your daytime people stay you're kind of bringing them out okay because now they're working for 16 hours yeah. or they don't go home and stick around uh if you have an outside people come in then you have to have the inside people give up their keys give it access to the cabinet if the chuck is seized in the morning and you don't know it and you show up or <laughs> something there were certain um you know, accidents that would happen at night, but the, the, the daytime teacher wouldn't know it until they arrived the next day. Okay, so yeah. you could, you know, so they were just a variety of issues, you know. And then what happens if your daytime people do the double shift, then they have a tendency to call in sick more often because they're, because they're more likely to be sick, they're warm. So these are just challenges of running multiple programs. Watch your investment. Mm -hmm. Any other new business to bring forward? Doc, do you have anything? Uh, no, I, I, it's probably uh, an item for the good of the committee. Um, so I'll hold it for the next category. Speaking of the next category, is, I don't see any other new business coming forward. Items for the good of the committee. Um, as always, the printed materials are available. If you want to help you with like a copy, Jerry's got his resource handy. <laughs> Doctor, you, you have yeah, we just I mean, we we are receiving regular uh, notifications of opportunities to you know promote some of the accomplishments of our students. Uh, the uh, you know in, um, in, in well, we just had a student who received a full ROTC scholarship. And his grandfather hugged me the other day, and he was appreciative of everybody. Uh, Blackstone student, fine young man. Uh, the uh, we just received, a, among others, a request to have um, one of the Boston media uh, do a special on a, a student who's graduating who, who's had perfect attendance in every grade at every level since he started school. Wow. Right? And so, uh, and he is among wow. three with perfect attendance in our graduating class, but this young man has never missed a day anywhere. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, kindergarten through 12th grade. So, yeah. And so they, they want to do a, they want to do a special on him. Do we have any? They're coming Monday at noon. That way, the young man can participate in Senior Day um, in the morning, um, and then they're going to come. Nobody's hoping he doesn't get sick. No, I knew this coming. Set him up. I, I, it's interesting because I got the call from the reporter to validate his attendance record 
and so forth. I think it's really great that they're recognizing him for this. And attendance is something that is very highly valued by us as a very technical school because employers value it so much. <coughs> um, but just as a, a point of interest, and not to take anything away from the young man, uh, in my time here, he is the third to have K through 12 perfect attendance. Really? Yeah. I, I, when the first one, I never thought I'd see another one. And I said that when we got the second one. I said, you know, I guess lightning does strike twice. I never thought I'd see a second one of these. And so now he is actually the third Valley Tech student in my 21 years to do this. So I'm not sure if that enhances the story or, or, or lessens it, but I thought it was a, a, a pretty cool thing. Having have them meet the kids who do not have a perfect attendance. <laughs> <laughs> if they're here. So, no, obviously, our attendance is a speech for itself when you look at the data. Uh, anyway, that's. Well, I was going to say, I mean, have it happen here three times, you know, obviously shows the commitment at the K through 8 levels. It makes me wonder how many times is it happening across the Commonwealth. No, that's only three during the Anthony's time. That's back. three in 21 years. Yeah, that's so. it. So. All right. Any other items for the good of the committee? All right. Seeing none, our next regularly scheduled meeting is June 21st. And I see that we have completed the agenda as pr presented and brought forward. I will entertain a motion. Motion. Motion, motion made and seconded by Mr. Bartlett to adjourn this meeting. All the questions, comments, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah.